Hi everyone and welcome to Connected Learning TV. This is the second webinar in our August series titled Cultivating Global Entrepreneurial Learners in the Networked Age. I'm John Barroloni, the Community Manager for the Connected Learning Alliance and I'll be the host slash moderator for today. Uh, throughout this month on Connected Learning TV, we're exploring global examples of learners and practitioners leveraging the tools of our digital networked age to grow, um, quote unquote, entrepreneurial learning in uh, connected learning environments. And today we're chatting with a bunch of cool folks from the Online Model United Nations program. Um, we're going to frequently refer to it as OMUN, um, with its founder, Lisa Martin, and also several student leaders from around the globe. Um, but before we dive into our chat, let's go over just a, a couple quick details. To those who are watching live right now, um, either on connectedlearning.tv or Google Plus, um, we really welcome your comments and questions throughout today's webinar. Uh, on Twitter, you can use the hashtag connectedlearning, or you can use the Google Plus event page. And we'll do our best to address any questions that we're getting in real time here. And we're also chatting throughout the month in the Connected Learning Google Plus community and using that same Connected Learning hashtag. So I'd like to give all of our guests here a chance to briefly introduce themselves before we jump into a, a conversation that I'm sure is going to fly by. So I'm just going to go from my left to right. So Ananya, do you want to start us off? Yeah, sure. Um, hi, I'm Ananya. I am the Online Model United Nations 2014-2015 Social Media Officer. Um, I started OMEN this year in January um, via the UAE National Program that we had. That was the first debate of the UAE National Program, and I was instantly hooked. And since then, um, I'm a diplomat on the OMEN DRS system. If you want to learn more about our digital badges, it's on um, on the resources that we've put on the on the document, um, and I'm also a moderator. And yeah, love Oman and love my job. Um, I'm fairly new compared to a lot of us here, so um, it's it's been like learning and stuff. But yeah, it's pretty good. Awesome, thanks. And Ashish. Hi, I'm the Deputy Secretary General of the Middle East for the 2014-2015 uh, year. Um, I've been doing online MUN for almost a year and a half now. Uh, I was previously the national liaison at uh, the UAE, which was really successful. And I'm a moderator at Online Model UN. All right, awesome. And Elizabeth? Hi, uh, my name is Elizabeth. I am the Deputy Secretary General of Africa. Uh, in Bamin Omni. I live in Tanzania, in Darwin, and I have been doing online for about three years now, but I have been a leader for about three years. I started off by being the EAO Executive Administrative Officer of Tanzania, and I've really loved it ever since, and I've really pushed up and really uh, loved being in F1 UN. I'm also a moderator, and moderated for a couple of times. Uh, in different debates, I've participated in different things as well, and, yeah. All right, thanks for joining. And Carrie? Oh, okay. Um, hello, thank you on behalf of the entire OMU community, community for having us. Um, my name is Carrie. I currently live in the United States of America. However, I have lived overseas in the Middle East region. I joined OMIN almost about a year ago, ago as as a delegate, and then three months later, I became Community Development Officer and Moderator. This year, I am currently the Community Development Officer, and I have just become a chair, which helps the debates and help debate flow go by. So. Hmm. Awesome. And Lisa. Hello. Oh, we skipped Salam. Oh, Let Salam go first. OK, no problem. Salam, go ahead. Uh, OK. Um, hey, everyone. Well, my name is Salam Kadan, and uh, I am the Assistant Director of the Middle East and Africa um, for the Online Water United Nations Program. And I've joined OMEN about um, three years ago, and it's been incredible. I've gained a lot of um, skills, and it's been great. 
And I'm currently a freshman in university, majoring in uh, Middle Eastern studies. And yeah. <laughs> That's great. And last but not least, Lisa. Thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is Lisa Martin, and I am a 20-year-plus veteran educator, uh, having worked in both the U.S. and overseas. And uh, several years ago, I got a crazy idea of uh, attempting to do Model United Nations, something I've done for a number of years, to do that online. And uh, in about two days' time, I will be headed to Doha, where I will be heading up the Simon Qatar office, doing Model United Nations there, as well as continuing this program. Congrats. <laughs> Getting some applause there in the Hangout. Um, <laughs> Lisa, real quick, um, just to kind of cue it up for people who either aren't as familiar with Model UN and what it looks like online, how it functions online, could you give us a little bit of background on where the idea came from? I mean, why the need to take something that you normally think of as offline and put it online on the internet? I, I think this is an interesting story because I think it puts not only the program in context but also where we stand in terms of education and learning um, in a larger digital age. Uh, I did a one-year stint at an online private school and like all teachers I was asked to do an extracurricular activity and I decided that I would attempt to do uh, an extracurricular activity uh, and, and do an online MUN program and I had no idea if it would work but very tellingly when we set up a little test kind of a little test session where we just invited some students from around the world to join online to, to test it out to see if this would actually work we had anticipated about a 90 minute workshop test session and 19 hours later we finally closed our classroom what happened is that as kids logged in from Singapore, they would go to bed, kids from the Middle East would log on, and for 19 hours that classroom stayed open, and that night I slept with my laptop next to my bed, listening to kids talking around the world about how you could attempt to do MUN online. And a lot of what we do online, whether it's raising your placard to vote, to submitting amendments, all of that was developed really by those first group of students in that 19-hour session. Um, and at that point, I think I realized, oh, this might actually, there might be a market for this. Now, interestingly enough, the for-profit online school that I worked for also thought there was a market for it. And they immediately, after two successful debates, shut the program down, pulled the plug, and uh, uh, put a minder on me, called in their attorneys, because they wanted to try to kind of patent and monetize it. And in some notes that I recently found, uh, some of the discussions were looking at a student entry point of about 230 US dollars a student. And at that point, uh, I started getting uncomfortable. It seemed to just violate everything Model United Nations stood for that I had been doing for, for almost two decades. Um, and so I quit my job, read my non-compete clause very, very carefully, and decided that I was going to sit it out for a year. And when that year was over, then I started uh, the online MUN program. Very cool. And you know, Carrie had brought up in the chat that she got introduced to it uh, a little bit because she was already in online schooling. Uh, so I wanted to open that up to the rest of the group as well. Uh, how did you get introduced to online model United Nations had you done you know offline model United Nations before and this is just kind of a natural integration or or was it random what's your guys' stories well um, I'll just start off first uh, I move around a lot due to my father's job he is an, in the airline industry, so I've lived throughout the Middle East, and I kept moving schools. So after going to a school, going to them to an MUN conference as DPRK in disarmament, I realized it was something I really wanted to do. It was something that stood for me and what I wanted to be in my future, in my future career. So it took a while. I kind of had a year looking around and my friend sent me hey you should check out this website called online Mali nine nations so i was sitting around the computer around one o'clock in the morning and i decided to press that send button and join and it was probably one of the best 
best things I could have ever done for myself. I guess I'll go next. Um, I got I got introduced to Omar Model Imaginations after Miss Martin uh, arrived at Tanzania. She made a whole a big presentation with the Youth of United Nations Association in Tanzania. It was the major. It was like the time when of Tanzania, but it was Yuna. And I had gone there together with my MUN team from school, and everyone just sat there like, oh, MUN, so poor. But you don't get to travel. And I was there, like, how could you? How could you? This is awesome. You don't need to spend so much money on traveling. So, and I got really connected, and I talked to Miss Martin and asked how it all happened. It's just from the simple. Just go on the site, and then you have other uh, leaders who will get you on. And ever since I started becoming a delegate, and then as I was a delegate, I started improving uh, and um, started becoming the EA of the designers so and things like tiny things, really valuable. And it all just went up from there. It was amazing. It was like my second life. I'd come home, i go straight to Facebook because I know Simon Norman has different types of updates and different types of things up there. I just go straight away, my mom would so annoyed. But, yeah, <laughs> that's my story. Yeah, I think that my story is pretty similar to, to Elizabeth, even though I've never met Miss Lisa. I, I know that um, it was Ashish, and he's just like, um, he came up to me, and he's just like, oh, by the way, I'm doing this called, something called Omen. I'm like, is it like Skype? Because I'm not really into that. And he's just like, no, please come. I'm like, I'm, I'm not so sure. I'm happy doing MUN, because I was doing MUN since uh, the last year of middle school, so this is my fourth year doing MUN. And he's like, please just come for one debate. You know, we're having a national program. It's all going to be people from the vice so it's going to be hard or anything, and I'll help you. I promise, just come, just come. And I did my first debate, and I was just like, what is this? It was like a new world. And I think that was January, and I think I've done at least three to four debates every month since and you know just got in through and when the applications came out for the leadership team I'm like I gotta be on this I love this program so much in such a short span of time it's been you know something that I really really enjoy so yeah um, you know even if you do traditional MUN uh, OMEN is something completely you know different it's just so exciting the community the camaraderie of people is just so beautiful and it's just so good to be a part of so yeah definitely and maybe one quick thing that I can uh, interject is that uh, one of the things that surprised me in the development of this program was how quickly it became kind of a leadership incubator that uh, you can very quickly and very easily become involved because it's, you know, there's very low barriers or there's no cost associated. So for students who really want to use this as uh, an opportunity to debate, they very quickly can become empowered to become leaders. And I think all these students are really good examples of uh, seeing an opportunity jumping in and really developing their own leadership potential through the program. Okay, um, I actually joined uh, Online Model UN through the national program. I was given the position as national liaison, and I was a bit confused because I'd done a few debates before that. I was like, oh, "What's going on?" So when I went in, I loved it. Like it was like joining a family. Online and here was like a community which I was in love with. And um, through through the national program, and I'm actually majorly involved in the Dubai International Academy's Model UN. And through my MUN director, I just. Um, I got really into Online Model UN and I got all these great positions which I'm so thankful for and I'm just in love with the community. Uh, well, for me it was uh, at my second conference about yeah three years ago and it was uh, it was the program was very new I guess and. Um, an MUN director at that conference contacted our MUN director and she sent us information about it and then I uh, got in touch with Miss Lisa and ever since it's been a great journey. Yeah, that's how I learned about Omen. <laughs> and so Salam is our one university student 
here that as the program has grown, um, I had to find a way to step away from the computer, you know, at least for a couple hours a day to sleep. And uh, people like Salam were really the backbone in helping us grow because university students provide some of the additional oversight and, and supervision is not really the right word, but uh, she was also instrumental in doing a lot of our early graphics, setting up our YouTube channel, um, helping us convert demo debates and getting them online. So she, uh, a, a big part of our growth goes to, uh, to the efforts that Salam uh, put in over the last couple of years, so. That's great. And yeah, <laughs> round of applause there again. Um, so kind of another question again for our student leaders here. So besides being this platform where you can practice, you know, debating skills and, and researching skills and, you know, all the other skills that go into a regular uh, model United Nations session, what other, you know, attributes or, or skills or mindsets have you seen um, yourself gaining through OMUN? <laughs> and whoever wants to jump in to start us <laughs> off. Go ahead, Elizabeth. Um, before I started when I had gone to the training, I only had face-to-face uh, -face debates, and I found it very scary because not a lot of people actually interacted. They just boom, talk, boom, talk, boom, amendments, there, there. Nobody really actually interacted and talked about something. It wasn't a proper lobby or anything, but when it came to MUN, uh, I learned how to gain confidence more than in face-to-face uh, -face conferences where I could actually talk to people. I could actually um, make, get ideas from them, have a proper conversation with different people with completely different views than I do. And that's something I have never done in my life and something that uh, started uh, with you and, and that just really strengthened uh, my talking skills because I did not talk a lot. Uh, the second but main thing was group work. I was that type of nerd in class that if we would be put in group work, I'm the person to do all the work, and everyone is just like, they're like, oh, this is going to do all the work anyways. But when it came to only when everyone had their share of work, even in the leadership team, especially in the leadership team, everyone had their different sort of uh, responsibility, and everyone actually did them. We, we didn't have any sort of problem where someone would lag. Well, sometimes we did, but most of the most of the time not. And it's something that really captured me, and that's something that kept me going. Like from from this day on, I wouldn't be doing all the work. And group work was something that I actually started to like in my life thanks to that. It's going next. Well, for me, I think besides research skill and debate skills, which definitely Oman has helped improve, I think um, time management, because you got to give you know time to these debates, and they have, for us, they're, they're usually on Saturday and Sunday, and in Dubai, our weekend ends on Saturday. So, you know, being able to, like, finish my homework and then go and do my debate, or come after school on Sunday and do the debate, I think time management for sure. Um, also, just it's made me, it's made me so much more of like an open-minded person because everyone here is from all over the world. There's no, there's you know, there's not just like a certain region. There's people from all over the world, and to be able to like get to know people like that um, is something that's really like opened my mind. Um, besides that, yeah, it's. Um, you know, it just made me more involved, wanting to like know about news and stuff, um, keeping up with current issues because our topics are very current, and so yeah, just, you know, helps with all these things for sure. Well, for me, I think this might be a bit of a cliche one, but I really think that Omen ha has um, given me a lot of leadership skills, especially for the future, and. Um, Stuff like um, when I was national liaison, I would designate jobs to people. I would um, tell people what to do, and um, it honestly just made me more organized. It it helped me um, know what to tell people and how to convey the message to people. And yeah, I think the leadership skills have really been a big impact from Omen for me. 
if I can, I'll throw in one other thing that I see students doing, and that is, um, with the exception of our Blackboard Collaborate um, license, uh, which has been given to us by the Thyman Qatar office, uh, everything else we use is free. So. Uh, as the program has grown, we've had to really experiment. How do we use Skype? How do we use Facebook effectively? Um, Twitter, TitanPad, Google Docs doesn't work in China. We have to use you know, other options to pull documents into our online classroom. Um, and so when you talk about some of these technology skills that, that we all need to be very proficient and very well versed in, these are all things that students are learning um, how to use and if I don't know an answer and I usually don't then I throw it out to my leadership team and I'll say we need a solution uh, who wants to give it a try and and someone will come up with a solution I think that's extremely valuable and I think it's it's sometimes hard to teach that in a classroom right you have to be engaged in a project um, that is actually you, you have an end goal and then you got to look at what's available and try to put the tools together to make it work for, for me, I must say, the most important thing about education is getting out there and seeing it for yourself. You can't always learn it from a textbook. And when you're an OMUN, sure, it gives you leadership and stuff, but it also gives you cultural education. You get to see someone's opinions on an international issue from a different perspective. And in order to fix the, the issues that are here in our international community today, we have to make sure that we see all sides of the spectrum and then come to consensus which is something that OMEN really has given us the power to do. Yeah, well, for me, again, as well, um, as said before, all of the leadership skills, of course, and uh, like for, for organizing events, like debates, um, being respons like responsibility, uh, of course, and uh, getting more perspectives, as Carrie mentioned, um, it's it, like you can learn a uh, country policy from the news or like you can research but you can never like learn really what's going on until you meet people there and this is a great program because it gives you the opportunity to um, like you have the ability to meet people from all around the world who are all interested in learning about each other and just sharing their perspectives and yeah that's like for me the best part of this program Great. Those are all some awesome answers, everyone. Thanks. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Ashish, I think you kind of started off this line of thought about um, the leadership aspect within OMUN. And I know a lot of you, or well, I think all of you, are actually in leadership positions. So I was wondering if you could talk a little bit more about um, how you feel being in that leadership position has, again, affected other areas of your life. Are you, you know, literally always the team lead? Are you sometimes you know, teaching others how to be leaders? And maybe as a little bit of a follow-up, is OMUN completely you know, student-run, no adults allowed? Or do you have interaction with adult leaders as well? Actually, I, I was going to turn this over to the students, but let me address that, that last point. Um, one of... There, there are different kinds of Model United Nations, and the, the Model United Nations that I kind of learned as a director uh, is based out of The Hague. It's called The Hague International Model United Nations, or Thymen. Um, the Thymen philosophy is that from the planning of de the debates, the running of the debates, and the organizations, and you're, you're talking sometimes huge conferences of one, two, three thousand students. These are run by high school students for high school students. So my philosophical approach to all of this when this started was that the students should be the ones empowered to do um, the, or, the organizing and the execution of the actual debates. Having said that, because it's online and just like a traditional classroom, uh, there has to be some level of supervision. So, um, you know, the online classrooms, the, the keys to those classrooms are held by university students. That's why it was critical to, to keep people like Salam involved because as we expanded to Middle East Africa, America, you know, Europe, I, you know, International Court of Justice, as the program grew, we needed to have more over 18s who had kind of signed up you know, all the, the liability stuff and, and could oversee the program. Um, 
and even though, as I was joking earlier, I'm kind of the mother of OMUN and tiger mom of OMUN sometimes, um, and I do push them hard, really at the end of the day, if the students don't run this, there's no way you can run a global program with one person sitting at her computer, namely me. So the fact that we have grown significantly and we do have the kind of outreach now that we do, this could not have happened without this being run, a uh, student-run organization. And with the exception of maybe one or two other individual uh, teachers, uh, it's pretty much me and the students from around the world. So I. In a nutshell, I guess I would say this is very much a student-run organization, but I know the students can speak to that uh, probably better than I can. Um, well, the leadership team is very, um, we're very like, we all, whenever we have a problem, we would either go to each other, and we're, we have all matured, especially in the program. We've all um, realized what to do, and we like whenever we have a problem, we would either post it on the group. We have the executive leadership team group, and we'd all con we'd all decide on an idea or on how to so solve the problem. And I think um, the leadership team, and especially when it comes to mentoring, it, it really helps because we're all helping each other in some way or the other. Okay, um, when it comes to IUN, I have learned uh, way, like, so many different things apart from just uh, debating. For example, uh, I have, after uh, IUN, I started teaching a lot of people about MUN, not only MUN as in different other types of MUN programs, but mainly time and moment because that's something that I fell in love with. So I started teaching in my school. I started going to different schools, teaching them about uh, Thaimon Amun. Uh, we used different types of um, resources. I have really uh, learned lots of different things. For example, I didn't know how to use Mighty Belt. Uh, that's where we share most of our um, resources when we debate. And I started becoming way way more confident when it comes to leadership. And by way, I'm not exaggerating, way, I have gone uh, up leadership and become more confident when it comes to so, uh, when it comes to be the African Leadership Academy finalist, but I didn't make it, but still, it be I became so much confident because I have been taught how to speak out, how to have a voice, and ever since, I started becoming a leader, especially Deputy Secretary General of Africa. I started having this, this part in me where I thought, I think, and I know that I could start uh, motivating youth all around the world. By the way, everyone, happy uh, Youth Day. So, youth day. so uh, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> so, Amyan has taught me for so much and has actually changed my personality as Omen leadership, when I first started, they took me in. I uh, started as community development officer, and I'm still community development officer. And I must say, our Facebook pages are like our nerve centers. They host everything that we need. Whenever you have a problem, you can go to anyone within the community, whether it's an EAO or if it's an assistant director, such as Salam or Omar, etc. Really, the leadership team has given me so much. It has given me the confidence to be able to say, I'm going to take charge in something, and I'm going to, I'm going to do this for the community, like uh, our yearly party. That was a lot for me as a first-year omen. I had to host a whole party, and, you know, the leadership was there to back me up, so now I can feel like I can do anything. We are really, we're not just a community. We're really a family, and it's a family I'm so happy to be part of. Salam, before I let you jump in, uh, let me just explain to viewers. So we, we have our main Facebook page, which by the way, we hope that you'll you'll like, and we update that sometimes even a couple of times a day. We have an executive leadership team uh, Facebook group with over 70 students from around the world, a couple of, of teachers uh, and, uh, and advisors, but it's mostly students. That's really the nerve center. That's where the planning takes 
place. A uh, tremendous amount of Facebook chat. My computer looks like a call center in the evening with just kids pinging and you know talking from all over the world. Um, and then we have a, a main delegates Facebook group that is open only to high school students, and we try to weed the graduates out, and we get teachers wanting to join, and we don't allow that. Um, and that's and that's 1,300 of us, I think, on that group. And then each region also has a Facebook group. So we have one for Europe and the Americas, the Middle East, Africa, and Asia. We also have an ICJ uh, group. Uh, and then lastly, we also have a moderators group. So for the students who are actually running the debates, the chairs, the amendments moderators, we have a special group um, where they're doing their planning as well. And there are other Facebook groups. Um, w without Facebook, and we've tried some other alternatives, at least in the early days, without Facebook, it would be extremely difficult to uh, to run this program. And for kids whose Facebook access is blocked, like our delegates and leadership in China, they have to get really creative in uh, um, you know working around those firewalls so that they can actually get online. So this is where I like to say uh, OMEN is a subversive activity, right? Model United Nations is not supposed to be a subversive activity, but we like it when kids can um, can try and you know find their own workaround so that they can connect with their peers. Yeah, um, for me, well, when I joined Omen, I was um, I was very shy. I, I never have the ability to get in front of like a, a small crowd. But then after having my well assigned my first um, leadership title in Omen, I had to promote the program and uh, talk to as many people as I can about it. And then I gone, I was giving presentations at my high school about it to like different classes and then I I even got went to different high schools and started doing the same thing and it got to bigger and bigger crowds and I ended up like doing giving presentations about the program and like for more more than a hundred people and it it definitely like gave me a lot of confidence and it pushed me a lot and uh, I'm really grateful that it did and yeah it, it did change me a lot um, program. Um, it's great to hear. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Oh, uh, I'm sorry if, you, if you'd like to go ahead. No, go ahead, Anya. Um, I don't think any of us mentioned the structure of the leadership team, um, so I just thought I'd put that out there. Um, we are on our third Secretary General right now, and um, I, I'm, I really, it makes me really proud to say this, but we've had a Secretary General from all the regions. We've had from the Americas region. We've had um, our last one for 2013-2014 was Mariam from Saudi Arabia, and now we have Rohan from Taiwan. So it just goes to show how international just, you know, our Secretary General is. And then it comes down to um, the DSG. Um, the DSGs are basically um, regional like the like you could see the managers of each of the specific regions. Um, we have DSGs for moderating tra for moderator training, um, for ICJ, um, for public affairs, and then it comes. That's the executive uh, leadership team, and then we um, go down into the global leadership team, um, which is us officers. So like Carrie and I, the social media officer and the community development officer, and our e. AOs, which are the executive administrative officers for each country, and they promote. And then the national liaisons, um, as Ashish used to be the national liaison of UAE, and they basically are affiliated with a school um, where we can have national debates. So that's kind of, if people were wondering um, the structure of our leadership, I think that it's, it's very clear cut, and we all have our jobs. Um, and it's and I think um, before you, when you asked the question, you said um, if we're all like if we're always the leaders, um, I've felt like I've learned, I've been led more than I've actually led, and I think that's, and I think that's for us in, in so many ways because I put myself out of my element. Like I'm good with the Facebook side, the social media side, but I've helped with like debates and stuff like making promises. That just goes to show that we, while we might have our own like job position, like our title. We go into all the different parts um, of the thing. Yeah, that's a good point. It's a very complex machine. That's really cool to get the view of how it all works together. And you know, even more impressive that it's pretty much all young people doing it. So that's awesome. Um, 
I know this was a, a topic that kind of came up on our, our chats before we had this webinar, and I was interested to learn more about how digital badging and digital badges are kind of finding their way into online model nations because um, I know digital badging comes up a lot, especially in uh, American and U.S. education as kind of this micro-credentialing system, um, trying to capture the learning that's happening, you know, outside of school and actually showing that to either, you know, future colleges, universities, employers, showing off skills that you've learned. So <clears throat> I think, Lisa, you wanted to kind of tee it up for us there. Yeah. Um, I, I think I realized at, at the beginning of our, of our first year, so this was three years ago, when after some of our early debates, I started getting emails from students saying, uh, can I get a, can I, you send me a certificate? So, I mean, obviously the logistics of this weren't possible even if we were to send them by email and then just numbers, it, it just wasn't possible. We tried a couple of times with little PDF certificates and emailed them out. Um, and at that point, you know, digital badging, the, the, you were just starting to hear about it. I did some research and I thought, oh, this is great. You know, so I was looking for the product, right? Buy the product and then we can start issuing badges. Well, I was kind of two years ahead of the, the game. Um, but the minute we found uh, a company to work with us that could help us get this stone, uh, going, uh, we jumped on it immediately. So we're working with Achievery um, out of Rhode Island. They've been absolutely fantastic in uh, kind of getting us started. Um, and so what we do is, again, because of the Thiemann philosophy, we don't we don't issue awards, so we don't target kids, you know, like you're the best speaker, you're the, the best delegate. But we, we began to get some delegate feedback that there was a need for some kind of recognition. And so we created what's called the delegate recognition system. Um, if a student signs up for a debate, they get a point. If they ask a question, they get a point. If they main submit a resolution, they get 10 points. So kind of the, the more you participate, the more points you rack up. And one of the moderator's job, a tally moderator, keeps track of this in every single debate. We have a university student based in Lebanon. He aggregates all these numbers at the end of the month, and we update our spreadsheet. So then what I do is, you know, every two to three months is we look at those points tallies and if you've hit a certain level then we issue you a digital badge and we link it back to this spreadsheet. Um, now it's interesting when we first started doing this last year kids are like well, what am I supposed to do with this uh, you know but interestingly as this has developed and as we've done this now for about I don't know maybe eight months uh, students are now starting to ask like, when are you going to update that? Am I going to get a badge? Um, I make badges for all the leadership team, and last year that those weren't sent out probably until December. Uh, this year, I asked the leadership team, I said, I can do them now or I can wait. And the response I thought was really interesting. They said, please send us that because we want to put it on our uh, college applications. So um, that's the growth that I see, and I do think we're the only MUN program using digital badges. Uh, it's a perfect way to capture all the stuff that these students are talking about in a way that's portable and a way that they can share, uh, you know, in, in, in any format that they want. I, uh, I joined OMEN when they just started doing the badges and I must say I was rather excited because I do a lot of volunteerism and I do a lot of internships and I like giving my school also that substantial substantial evidence that I'm doing it and to prove everyone how much I've done. It's not just about that. Of course I love the community. It's the best thing in the world. But having that for college applications, for having that for even simple things like volunteerism or for me my school to show them how much I've been doing outside of the classroom and how much I've been doing leadership and also as a delegate really does help give that evidence of MUN, OMUN is the future and this is who I am, this is what I do. Yeah, well, it, uh, when it comes to digital badges it's more of well, some people like to say it as an award for a job or like a salary once you've done something, right? But this is uh, what mainly people use uh, these badges for, not only in Tamil Omen, but for different other clubs, like cooking and stuff. Um, uh, this is used mainly for a CV. Um, 
But it's also not only for that, it's also something as a motivation for different people. So if you're getting these badges, it motivates people to do more. If you don't just, that's how kids or young people are. If they do something, they have to give them that sort of push and sort of uh, motivation to do something more, to show them that they're able to do something more. So these badges, you know, only helps us when it comes to applications to different universities or schools. It also helps us uh, be motivated to do things. For example, um, when you, when a person, any youth, knows that they have accomplished something through these badges, they are like, "Oh, I did something. That's that's really good. I want to do more. Not only for the badges, but because I do more." So it's, these badges really do make a difference when it comes to personal, uh, not only debating but also as a leadership. But uh, and yeah, it's and as Harry said, something to represent. As a person, you don't only represent yourself, you represent your school, you represent your country. For example, if someone is a DSG of uh, South Africa, for example, they don't only represent themselves or Diamond Almond, but they represent uh, their own country. So these badges are used to represent, and something that I've learned uh, last about leadership is that nobody just, no true leader actually works for a particular purpose. It works for the benefit of an, uh, an accomplishment, right? So these badges uh, help us in one way to be future leaders, make an accomplishment somewhere, and it really motivates everyone to do something more. Yeah. Um, what I found is that digital badges, I think Owen, I mean, I think after it got Simon status, after um, you know, so many people joined in. Um, I don't think any would have, anyone would have thought that this this would help us, you know, actually applying for real conferences. Um, earlier this year, I had the opportunity to chair at a Thymine affiliated conference here in Dubai. Um, and to be able to say that you've been doing Omen is actually something that a lot of conferences, Thymine conferences, obviously, because they're affiliated with um, Omen, but other conferences worldwide really, you know, give um, they give weightage to this because they think that um, you know being a part like you just you're transcending just regular conferences. You know, you're making an effort to do this on a monthly basis, and I think that's why the digital badges are really useful. Um, also, um, Carrie, as Carrie mentioned, um, we get badges not only for debating and stuff, um, but also the travel teams get them. Um, and also if you write blog posts. So it just shows that um, it's not only the debate side of Omen, but you know we're so much more. We're outreach, we're, you know, we're like updating people on current events. So it's, you, get, you, know, you get recognized for that. Um, also in schools now, if you know if the International Baccalaureate is a, it's a curriculum, um, and we have uh, CAS, which is um, Community Action, um, Creativity, action, and service, and to be able to use Omen and have proof in the form of a digital badge um, is great to be uh, add to add that to your to your application. So yeah, yeah. pretty cool. Um, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, oh, go ahead, Ashish. Oh no, no, no go ahead. okay. Um, yeah, um, as Ananya said, the credibility of the digital badges is really, really effective, especially. For for an example, when I uh, I'm actually currently the deputy secretary general of Dubai International Academy in Model UN, and um, when I applied, it was um, it was really helpful and it really proved my point that um, I have been around and I have been very a part of online NUN. And to reiterate on Elizabeth's point, where it really motivates delegates, like when I was the national liaison of the UAE. I would get many people coming up to me and going, when are the points getting updated? When are when when is this happening? When is that happening? And I go, oh, okay, calm down. And um, yeah, so it just it really motivates people. And people get really it's not really competitive, but they just really want to go out there and get really involved in the community. Yeah, as um, everyone already mentioned, it's uh, I see it 
what, first of all, as a motivation for all students who, um, like, who are debating all the time, or like writing, or blog posts, or blogs for our blog, and um, it's a really great way of like giving a prize for someone, or like letting them know that this is your like your hard work. You get something for it, and it's uh, it's exciting, and it's really it motivates students, and it's really good. And I think one other kind of a thread that I see here is this kind of uh, touching on legitimacy, you know, like how, how legit really is an organization that's totally online. Um, this, this is something that I think for people over the age of 30, it has been, that's kind of been my burden, I guess, the last several years, is trying to convince people who are not in high school that this is really the real thing. Um, when you listen to a debate, you close your eyes and you're you know, pretending that it's not taking place online, it sounds like a traditional Feynman style debate and we're purists in that sense, right? We, we run it exactly as a Feynman debate should be run. Um, but I, I think, you know, the digital badging is, is, is helpful for, for students to kind of share their, their experience. Uh, the fact that, you know, in, in The Hague at their very, very large conference, OMUN experience is actually seen as um, uh, a, a very legitimate form of uh, participation. So when students are, uh, you know, applying for leadership positions or chairing positions, for example, they are putting down their online experience, and the Hague has recognized that um, as legitimate. And I would say, if you have a, a delegate who's done a, a lot of chairing face to face, and a delegate who's done comparable but has additional online experience, that student with the online experience is actually coming out ahead. So. Um, I think that's that's good validation coming from the Hague International Model UN itself. Yeah, that is excellent, excellent validation. And thank you all again for giving us some insight on on how digital badging is working there. Um, quick time check: we're only about ten minutes out, so we probably just have time left for a couple more questions here. Um, but I wanted to do maybe a little bit of a, a thought exercise for our students here. Think back to your time before you were involved in you know, Model United Nations or, or OMUN and compare it to how you are now. Do you feel that this program has made you, in general, a more curious person? Are you like, more curious about what's going on in the world around you? And then why, if you were explaining to you know, other people your age, why is it good to be curious about you know, other countries that you may never see or live in? I'll uh, just start out. Um, I'd like to say that uh, living in the Middle East did make me a curious person about different policies, etc. However, OMUN really drived that and fired that into something I could have never seen. When I was when I was younger, I was like, you know, it'd be cool to work international. I, mean, I just I don't really know. OMUN gave me that drive. OMUN gave me people from that nation. Give gives me people who are experiencing it from themselves, people who have been in that situation, and gives me the spectrum on how it is for them and how it is for others. And that really helps because, like I said before, if you don't see other people's ideology or different experiences, you'll never be able to come to consensus in real life. So learning about different foreign policies and even learning from others in the community is rather important since we're the next generation to take over leadership in our world. Um, I think uh, curiosity, especially in Oman, is a big part of um, our community. And um, Carrie, especially, I have to give her credits for this. Every time we have an issue that comes up in the world, she'll be the first one to post it on the Facebook group. And there'll be a huge discussion on it. And we'll get every single point of view from different countries and what they think. And I think that's what really gets us to be open-minded and really get us to understand the topic. So, like, if there's an issue right now, and um, if I had no clue what to do with it, I, I'd, I'd just go on to Omen and I'd ask someone, what, what do you think about this? And we'd have a huge discussion about it. And I think that's really, really uh, effective, effective in Omen again. Yeah, um, when it comes to um, 
any more affiliates, curiosity actually improves the knowledge in any person, whether it's environment woman or anywhere. So how I was be before oil famine on it is I would never even touch a newspaper. I would never watch news because I thought it was absolute dull. It's an excuse to spend time in front of the TV. But after MUN, after my first debate actually, I started thinking, wow, there are lots of international people and people in Oman. I can actually ask them stuff and they actually have different stories. Uh, a good example is awareness of how things actually are uh, apart the difference of how they are in the news. For example, I have I recently connected uh, with a, a delegate from Nigeria. Her name is how to pronounce it? Bope. Bope. Okay. Um, and she was talking to me about how the Nigeria problem is in West Africa uh, about the um, the girls that are being uh, sold and kidnapped and about the Ebola breakdown, and that's something I didn't even know was actually happening that's actually that serious, because in the news is like, oh, Ebola breakdown, oh, Nigeria with banners, but she actually gave me a true story of how it is in her country. Or about um, a friend of mine, uh, she lives in um, South Africa, and she was asking about, oh, what's this thing about Ukraine, right, the thing with the Crimea? And it doesn't seem like such a big deal, and that just blew my mind. Because at home, I only have channels, two Russian channels. I don't have anything else. And we actually see live what, what's really happening and how the rest of the world is a small problem. And at, at, in talking about this with different people in Ormu and in online, just through how uh, you get a chance to you know, get ideas from different groups of different people and how exactly it is apart. Hey, Ananya, if I can interject before you make a comment, one thing that I found find really, really fascinating, um, and and I, I went over to the dark side about three years ago as an educator when, you know, I will friend no one under the age of 18, and I'm just like kids now. I friend, I'm checking out profiles. Who are these people? So, but so in my very big Facebook universe, um, what I find amazing is that when kids are talking about something or something comes up, and I'm looking at the responses, and I'm looking at kids who are connecting have never met before there's no way that they've ever met they're commenting on each other's items they're you know liking or what have you so you see this network of communication that that's taking place and there's probably loads of it that I don't see you know that's happening off of Facebook or or certainly privately um, that's been astonishing to me that that they have created kind of this environment and I will say in three years we have never had issues of people being disrespectful uh, you know spamming just that none of that has really taken place this is a really responsible group of students knock on wood it stays that way uh, but it has allowed for some interaction that um, if you told me three years ago this would have been the result I uh, I, I wouldn't have believed it um, yeah, I'll just add to that. See, the trick with MUN, which I didn't know when I was coming in, I thought, you know, you'd get, you'd get a country, and you know, I could just do research, and I would go into debate, and I, you know, I would know everything. But see, that's where Oman's, like, that, not Oman, where MUN is actually really, it really tests, like, your knowledge as a person. You can't just research your own country's policy, you know. You need to be up to date with news. I would go into debates, I would know everything I need to know about my country on the topic. But then I would not be able to refute or question the policy of other countries. And I think that that's where it's so important to be curious. And not just curious um, on a certain topic, on a humanitarian topic, for example. You need to know about the economics of it, you know, the military. You need to know about all these, this, this wide spectrum of things about the whole world. Um, and yeah, I mean, I was, I'm born and raised in Dubai. It's a very international city. Um, and it's just, it doesn't cut it, you know, if you're not, if, if you don't know things that are going on, you're, you're deemed as ignorant, and that's why it's so important to read the news and, you know, be a part of stuff like MUN. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, um, for me, Almond def definitely made me a lot more curious as a person. Um, I did join MUN before joining online MUN, but it's, it's very different. 
because for like uh, MUN conferences, it's always just preparing for this one conference, studying the issue, what's going on, just going to debate. With other students, it's mostly for like three to four days, and it's over. But then with online MUN, it's like you get to meet international students who are living under different issues that you didn't know about. And then you see, like, when you have them on Facebook, you see their posts every day, and then you kind of feel like you have to engage and learn more about what's going on, and that's the, the great thing about it, like, just keeping in touch with students from all around the world. It definitely makes you uh, more curious. Yeah, when you, when you have a delegate in Gaza and they're posting stuff, you pay attention. They say. No, no kidding. And that's amazing. I mean, thank you all for for sharing kind of how Omen has impacted your life. It it sounds again like an awesome program and again thanks to, to Lisa for kinda of coming up with this nugget and um, I understand Lisa from you know our our chat before we started here today, you've got a big move coming up and I just wanted to hear from you kind of what are some of the next steps for or you know, some of the next evolution steps for OMUN. For OMUN. So in, in two days I'll be on a plane headed to Doha again heading up the Thaiman Qatar office. Uh, the office there does uh, traditional conferences, leadership conferences, a film festival and what I'm going to do is take the online program with me. It's already very active um, in the Middle East and so I'll be working to find ways to leverage online community into traditional community and already I, there are lots of opportunities for, for different kinds of growth and different kinds of student engagement. One of the things that I, I will be working to develop and we started with the help of Salam um, is an, an online Arabic MUN. We also have a small French program. A student in Taiwan wants to start um, a, a Mandarin program and so there's a lot of uh, opportunity to do this in foreign language but uh, certainly with Arabic that's uh, something that I'm going to be working on um, when I'm in Doha. I wish I spoke Arabic, but that's why I have people like Salam to help me. What's the old Beatles line? I get by with a little help from my friends. That's it. So, just wanted to say thank you all again for you know your time, your energy, and insights. Especially, you know, it's uh, it's the summertime, so thank you again for taking the hour. Um, We'll have a full video recording of this conversation available immediately on the website www.connectedlearning.tv and other curated content on the way for anyone who wasn't able to watch us live. And this wraps up the second webinar in this month-long series, but that doesn't mean that we just have to end our conversations here. Um, really encourage everyone to keep the energy going by using the Twitter hashtag ConnectedLearning and getting involved in the ongoing conversations within the Connected Learning Google Plus community. And if you want to learn more about Online Model United Nations and follow kind of what their next steps are going to be on Twitter, the handle is OnlineMUN and the website is OnlineModelUnitedNations.org. And as a reminder, just stay tuned to our own website, the Connected Learning TV webinar series. Um, connectedlearning.tv for updates on all our other upcoming webinars this month. So big thanks again to, to everybody. A round of applause. Thank you. Thank right. you for having us. Of course. Thank you. Thank you.